Um, lo uh, looks like we're going. <coughs> so, um, we're talking about Soft, which is a coffee shop that way down across. Never mind. I'm sitting there about a year ago, and I'm minding my own business, and I see somebody out in the open who is also minding her own business, but she's holding a paper book, like an actual paper book, sitting there out in the open, not doing normal stuff. She's not checking Facebook or looking at cat pictures on Instagram. She just seems to be looking at this bit of dead paper and glue and kind of moving her eyes across it. And of course, naturally, I was shocked by this because it's not something that you see every day. And I was tempted to go up to her, and I didn't do this, I should say, because I'm not a savage, but I was tempted to go up to her and say, are you living in the past? Like, why are you using, why are you reading a book? Like, we don't need to read books anymore. These things, you know, should be, they're probably stockpiling them right now for Sovereign Hill. And it seems obvious now that books are just a relic of a bygone era. We don't need them. We have, as we were saying before, Robin, you have all these electronic resources. You don't need to bind them together in dead paper and glue. You can just have them on your phone. Now, Graceland. Now, somebody, and Robin was saying before, that this dates me. <laughs> this dates me terribly. I was in year 11 when this album came out. Do you guys know this album? I'm hoping you do. The Paul Simon Graceland album. I Sold 42, 42 million copies. And there's a song in it. These are the days of miracle and wonder. This is a long distance call. The way the camera moves in slow motion, the way we look to a song. Now, that was 1987. In all fairness, people thought that that was pretty cool in 1987. They thought, digital watch, man, look, it's got the date on it. And you can put it <laughs> underwater. Like, obviously, Paul Simon didn't have any idea what he was talking about. Those were not the days of miracle and wonder. Those were the days of cheap plastic watches. You know, people were still wearing pastels. But this is, in fact, these slides are misbehaving, I'm not sure why. These are, in fact, the days of Miracle and Wonder right now. He was wrong, but we're right. This is, I think, cost me $29 a month. It has 6,800 songs on it. It has all of my work emails. It has podcasts from the other side of the planet, which I get kind of as soon as they come out. It has Google Maps that if I type in the right address, Jenny, I will in fact get guided to the right place, which incidentally puts you ahead of an iPhone. We really, and again, you, don't, you would think that you'd need to, I don't know, go to NASA or something to get a device like this if you told me about it in 1987. But in fact, I think I might have bought it from a supermarket. When I was picking up my groceries, I just went, oh, look, they've got a new contract for the phone. And we and all of the kids carry them. Like, these genuinely are the days of Miracle and Wonder. And in the days of Miracle and Wonder, I've got to wonder why people are still reading books. But let's talk briefly about music. I'll try and stay under my seven minutes. We have literally been making music since before recorded history. There is no recording of one day we thought, let's start making music. We've just been doing it for longer than we've been recording stuff. So music is something primitive. But about a thousand years ago, we started doing something different. We started writing it down. Now, this is actually what musical notation looked like about a thousand years ago. It would be a mistake to think that this is... Sorry, I've, I've, I've realised it's on auto advance there. Yeah, I'm just going to struggle with it. This is not... It is probably the time. <laughs> this is not a primitive precursor to an iPod. It is not just about storage and retrieval. What you can do when you've got notation is that you're not just remembering simple melodies that you're passing on from one minstrel to another. You can actually put together complicated scores that you can go back to day after day and actually build things of incredible sophistication that you couldn't do before you had notation. This is what notation lets us do. That all of these people are not doing the same thing. It's not just about retrieval and broadcast. They're doing different things. And this was simply would not be possible without notation. So we go from simple tunes to vast, majestic, complicated symphonies. And this is a technological advance. might look like paper, but it's a technological advance. Of course, this is also true with words. We don't call it a symphony, we call it a book. The same one that person was boldly reading. Steve Jobs, beloved of, I suspect, a number of people in this room, said the Macintosh computer is like a bicycle for the mind that you just intuitively know how to use it. And I would say the iPad even more so. 
Like there are infants. Before they do that, what is it, the AGPA test or whatever it is on infants, I'm sure they're downloading their first app. Like it's very intuitive. But if the Macintosh is like a bicycle for the mind, I would say that a book is like scuba gear, scuba gear for the mind. Before you could write down and capture these complicated sequential thoughts, we were paddling around in the intellectual shallows. You just, you can go as far as your conversation goes and then you forget a bit of it. When you're writing something down, you frequently take a year or two, that's going to drive me around the bend, you frequently take a year or two to get your ideas in order, your words in order. There are people, like, I think it's Ian McEwan, um, the novelist, who writes a page a day. Like, that's how much care goes into the creation of it. And that's just a story, never mind your factual texts. Like, it's an incredibly tightly constructed piece of work. Now, does anyone know what type of bird this is? It's not the Twitter bird, I'll tell you that. No one? It's a mockingbird. Now, if you've got heaps of time, of course, you're going to spend 128 minutes watching the DVD. Isn't it funny that that seems like a lot of time now? If you're really, really time rich, you'll sit down with a novel and read all, I think, 198 pages of it. But if you do that, as opposed to the DVD or people quipping about it on the internet, what you'll have is a really deep understanding of what actually goes on in there. You can actually stand in their shoes. Harper Lee spent years putting this together. This is basically her life story. There's a great deal of knowledge, there's a great deal of truth, and you can access that through this bit of dead bark and glue. It's a repository of a great deal of human knowledge and experience. And of course, it's not just stories. It's not just kind of human truth, it's human fact. All of this stuff around us, all of these gadgets, are not built of flimsy understanding of people looking up how to make an Android phone on Wikipedia. You need to know a lot more than that. You need to go a lot deeper. And that is what a book is still good for. You can go into a particular topic and you can go incredibly deep, like that scuba gear. You can just dive down, you can stay underwater, you can really immerse yourself in the topic in a way that you just can't do if you're quickly searching for something. The age of books is not over. As you know, you can get them on your iPad, uh, there it is on an Android device. I've got my Kindle at home, of course. Uh, you can get them on your iPod. And books are still huge. For all the people say, oh, people still read books. Anybody read any of these? Come on, some of you must have. Yeah, I knew somebody <laughs> would have. But again, not one book, but three. Anyone read any of these? I certainly have. Huge business. Like, the age of books isn't over. <coughs> now, cover your eyes. <laughs> it's just plainly nonsense to suggest that it's all about, oh, you just look up what you need online. If you really want to know something, and perhaps we'll move off that slide, if you really want to know something, you can get a glimpse. On Twitter, of course you can. You can get a link off to something, and you even see long-form journalism, of stuff that runs over a thousand words. But if you really want to understand it, if you really want to enhance your reality, pick up a book, encourage your students to pick up a book, encourage your colleagues to pick up a book, because this is still the number one way to get information. And I'm done.